So Michael, let me begin by welcoming you to the uh, Lee Kuan Yew School of yeah. Public Policy and thank you very much for agreeing to do this uh, interview with us. Um, the first question I was going to ask you is, you know, in today's world, uh, as you look around, as you know, there was a time when everyone thought that the private sector had the answers to all the problems. Do you think that now government is back? First of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to be with you. I think um, your question is very important about this relationship between government and markets. And I think one of the things that's become abundantly clear around the world in the last decade, it was always true, but it's really clear now, is that government is important. So to use mm. your phrase, government is mm. back. But that doesn't mean you want necessarily want big government. That yeah. would be a matter of debate. Some people want mm. small government, some people want uh, big government. That depends on the country and the time. But there are three things that government has to do, and it's worth spelling them out because we take them for granted. Mm. Government, you can only have a market that works if government regulates it. Yeah. You can only have a market that works if monopolies are broken up, yes. uh, if abuses of the market are dealt with through the law. Yes, right. uh, you can only have individual rights, whether they're human rights or property rights, mm. if government enforces them. Yeah. Uh, and then there are some services that government needs to provide, That's infrastructure, right. uh, education, for example. Yeah. Even small government advocates believe government should do, do those things, and the more effectively government does them, the better it is for everybody. And I think the financial crisis really made that clear to people. Yeah. And then, of course, we have examples in the contemporary world in Syria, uh, in Libya, uh, and elsewhere of what happens when government collapses, and that's obviously devastating. Yeah. And so, you know, as you know, there are many young people today who are trying to make a decision about their future careers. They may be tempted to go, as you know, to work for a bank, to work for a consulting firm because you get paid a lot of money. And some, are, some, but some may want to consider a career in a government. And you've worked in government for some years. What advice would you give to a young man or woman who's thinking of going to work uh, in government service? What are the uh, advantages and disadvantages for working in a government? Well, the first thing I'd say uh, to anybody who's considering their career and looking at the public or the private sector mm. is over the life of a career, you may not have to choose, you can do both. Yeah. So th there are options here. Um, and I think increasingly what we'll see in the 21st century is people who switch between sectors at different times in their careers. And I hope that will be true because I think it's good for both sides of the, the debate because what we need is uh, governments that work well and markets that work well, not one or the other, but both. But what I'd say to anybody who's thinking about whether or not to work in government is, in my experience, working in government was the most exciting, most demanding, sometimes the most stressful, and also the most impactful work mm. that I've ever done. Uh, mm. And when you get things right in government, the benefit to citizens is huge in the sense of Achievement, not, not just a personal achievement, it's nearly always a collective mm. achievement. You're working with a group of people, but the sense that you can really make a difference for citizens, you can't beat that. And government is the place to do that. Mm. Well, I, I agree with you. I, I've worked in government also for 33 years. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, and, and, and you, you know what a difference that oh, makes. The, the impact, uh, impact in, of working in a government is much, much greater. Yeah, There's sure. no question about it. Uh, and I said that I'm glad I didn't spend my life selling toothpicks. Right. <laughs> uh, but the final question, many people watching this video, maybe young people, are thinking of enrolling at the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. And if a young person watching this video is thinking about why he or she should enroll in the School of Public Policy, especially the Lee Kuan Yew School, Public policy. What would you say to them about the advantages of a public policy education? Well, first of all, I think I think understanding public policy in general is a really good thing, even if you choose not to work in government. Mm. To understand how public policy is made, to understand international relations, to understand how government works, mm. these are things that are very important, even if you spend your whole career in business. Mm. So you can't lose. If you spend, if you learn public policy and work in business, that will be tremendous. If you learn public policy and work in government. So much the better. So the content is relevant, whatever you're going to do mm -hmm. in the world. And if you talk to any business leaders, they know that relationships with government, understanding international relations, understanding the risks and the opportunities, mm -hmm. that is a fundamental part of a successful business career. So that's the first thing I'd say. The second thing I'd say is the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy is one of the leading schools of public policy in the world. It's networked with some of the best institutions in the world. Uh, so if you're going to study public policy, 
particularly in this region, um, you can't do better than come to the Lee Plan you support government. You will uh, find through that both an education about the region and connections into the global public policy debate with Harvard and Stanford and Oxford and all of those things because this is a school uh, of public policy that people want to come to, uh, that people see as central to the debate in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your readings for us. No, pleasure. Pleasure. Look forward to it. Thank you.